Hi everyone, it's Michelle here. Hope you're having a great day. It's a beautiful day here. The sun is shining and I just went for a walk on the beach with my hat, my sunglasses of course, my sunscreen and my beach cover up. I've been seeing quite a bit of mention on some of the videos recently about sunscreens, which brands to buy, which ones to buy, and generally about covering up when you're in the sun for sun protection, for sun damage, because we want to protect ourselves from sun damage. Most of us, like myself, have done enough in the past. We don't want to do any more. But even more important than sun damage and aging to the skin, we want to protect ourselves against skin cancer. There's two forms of skin cancer that are commonly known about and one is called basal cell carcinomas. My family are genetically prone to these types of skin cancers and I personally have had a few cut out myself and it's not much fun. In fact everybody in my family has had basal cell carcinomas cut out at some point in some time now that we're all getting older from the sun damage we did when we were younger. We spent a lot of time in the sun. Australians are well known for being beach lovers and um, sun worshippers. Well we used to be more so and unfortunately in Australia we have the highest rate per capita of skin cancer in the world and Queensland being the state where, well, it's not the hottest state, but it's probably got the bulk of the population where people spend more time out in the sun, has the highest rate in the world, Queensland, of skin cancer. So it's a big topic in Australia and people are very aware of it. We have become more and more sun aware as time has gone on. Now recently, we're becoming more aware not of just skin cancer and sun damage with aging with the sun. We've become aware of the different sunscreens. So basal cell carcinoma is bad enough. It's, um, it's usually from, well, sun exposure and it can be or often is genetic. The fairer you are, probably the more likely you are to get a basal cell carcinoma if you've spent a lot of time in the sun, particularly when you're younger or, well, if you spend a lot of time in the sun. But even worse than that cancer, basal cell carcinoma, is melanoma. Melanoma is incredibly dangerous and lots of Australians also get melanoma. So it's something you have to be a lot more wary of looking out for although neither of them are good so this is why these days we are so much more sun aware than we used to be nobody wants to get these cancers i wish we had have known this when we we're younger but we didn't and now that we do we can only do our best and one of the things that is changing is people are taking a look at the sunscreens that they're using we used to just have a few brands of sunscreens. Well, now they are just so many brands there on the market. We even have our own made by the Cancer Council. It's called Cancer Council Products, and that's anti-cancer to try and prevent skin cancer. They have a whole range of skincare products. What people are focusing on now when it comes to sunscreens, it's not just the SPF factor, it's not how water resistant they are, although those things are all so important. People are concerned about the actual chemicals that they're putting into these sunscreens. They're concerned about whether they're friendly for their skin and they're also concerned about the reef. We now have sunscreens that are marketed as being reef friendly. As most people would know, we have a huge reef in Australia called the Barrier Reef. It's absolutely magnificent and we're having problems with our Barrier Reef as many reefs all over the world. 
it's, we're experiencing bleaching. I'm not going to go into all that because I don't know enough about what's causing bleaching. I think it's a, it's a multifactorial problem, but it's not just happening in Australia. It, it's been happening in Hawaii as well. In Hawaii, they have gone so far as to vote to ban certain chemicals that they've been putting into sunscreens because they believe that they're actually helping or contributing to bleaching of the reef. Now that's that's a pretty big step to take and I think soon this will happen globally. I'm hoping it will at least. So so what are these toxic chemicals that they've banned that we should be looking out for when we're buying sunscreen? What should we be looking out for when we're reading the list on the back? Well in Australia now they're having reef friendly sunscreens. They've actually got that written on there so that you they've done the work for you. You, you don't have to look out for them but I'll just read them out because I can't remember these names, these toxic chemical names. One of them is oxybenzone and the other one is octinoxate. So they think that what's happening, well they know for a fact what's happening is these chemicals are seeping into the young coral and causing bleaching. Now there's another thing also that people are concerned about with sunscreens and, and makeup in general actually is parabens. People are really concerned about parabens. You see it all the time now, paraben free. You see it on cosmetics and beauty products all the time. Why are we worried about parabens? Has that got to do with the reef? No, not necessarily. That's got more to do with the absorption of, of parabens into our skin. They are absorbed through our skin and they can mimic estrogen. They are concerned there, there might be a connection with breast cancer. They're not saying emphatically that there is, but there is a concern there and all parabens disrupt hormone function. This is an effect that's been linked to breast cancer and reproductive toxicity. Okay, so that's one chemical to be concerned with about putting on your skin. What I'm going to show you now is more about sunscreens and being sun aware. So I was just going to show you a couple of new sunscreens that I've recently purchased because soon the weather will be warming and I didn't have any. I'd run out so I needed some new sunscreen so I decided I was going reef friendly and I did a little bit of a google on this and a lot of the brands I could not obtain from the pharmacy. There's so many new brands popping up and you have to buy them online and honestly they're not cheap. Most of them were not cheap. One of them I could find in my local pharmacy called What Not, W-O-T Not. It was I think about $40 for a tube. Now if you go to the beach quite a bit and use quite a bit that's that's pretty expensive. So apparently what we're supposed to be cautious of are those chemicals I mentioned with no nanoparticles. I don't know exactly of what this nanoparticle thing's all about. That's getting quite scientific for me and um, I'd get my head around it if I spent a lot more time but I'll just buy what's reef friendly I think. So Australia has fairly stringent rules and conditions for the manufacture of sunscreens and so does Europe actually. So we're quite fortunate here in that way that um, we're getting taken care of. So they're just not allowed to manufacture with any old chemical. So I picked these up from my local pharmacy and there was a lot of products in there. There, there was really quite a lot of sun care and sunscreen products as you will find in most Australian pharmacies. And I don't live in a big town or in the city but there was quite a good range but there wasn't a huge range of reef friendly. They're, they're really a little bit new to the market and as I said there's smaller companies that are making them to start with but I know all the bigger brands will jump on board. I know they will because they don't want to miss out. This one is called Natural Instinct. It's an SPF 30. Um, it's three hours water resistant which is really good and down here it's got it's 100% free 
of parabens. So it doesn't have the parabens in there. And so it's telling me that it reflects harmful UV rays. That's good that it's telling me it reflects them because there's two types of UV rays. There's UVA and UVB. UVA is the one that penetrates a lot deeper into the skin and causes aging and skin cancer. UVB does as well but it's more prevalent in summer and the hotter months and the hotter times of the day. The fact that it's telling me it's reflecting is telling me that it's mineral based. Okay so so this one natural instinct on the back it's telling me it's got some pretty good things in there like shea butter and vitamin E which is an antioxidant. It's fragrance free. It's um, self-preserving with no synthetic additives. It's reef friendly. It's free from a lot of things actually. Chemical UV absorbers. Um, I don't know what PEGs are to be honest and propylene gly glycol and artificial fragrances and colors. So it does have zinc oxide in it. Most of them will have either titanium oxide or zinc oxide. That's okay. We're okay with those. Well, at this stage, we're okay with those. We need those in there. They're the ingredients that actually prevent um, the sunburn and the skin damage. So I don't know what I paid for this one now. I'm trying to remember it was under $30, but it was 20 something dollars, about $25 for that one. But this one, which is Graham's, it says so on the front. I'm not sure if you can see that there. It says reef friendly on the front. So this has got a SPF 30 natural sunscreen. Graham's is a company in Australia that's known for manufacturing natural skincare products. So they avoid chemicals. This one's two hour water resistant. It's got very high protection and it protects against UVA and UVB because apparently some sunscreens only protect against UVA or UVB. Lots of sunscreens protect against both and that's what you want. The ones that protect against both of those rays. So it's got my, microfine zinc oxide in there. It isn't mineral based and um, it does have, I'm just trying to see if it's got titanium dioxide or zinc oxide, which one it has in there. Hmm, it's got sesame seed oil, I know that. Oh, it's zinc. It has the zinc oxide in there. Okay, so that's Graham's Reef Friendly. And of course, it's cruelty free. They're both cruelty free. So um, they're, they're two particular sunscreens. That they're both SPF 30s and you can get SPF 50 sometimes, commonly more so 30s. Um, and I did read this, that the 50s really aren't any better. You really, they're saying if you just put a little bit more of the 30 on more often, you're getting the same result. That's what I read. Okay, so don't take my word for it exactly. You might want to research that. It doesn't seem to make much sense, but they said you're just as well off with your 30s as you are with your 50s. So let's have a look at some other products I use as sunscreens or to be sun aware or for sun protection. Now this one is incredibly popular in Australia. The company is just called Zinc and obviously they probably got the name from Zinc Oxide. So this is called Invisible Zinc. This is an SPF 30 and it's slightly tinted. It's just called light. It is mineral. It says mineral on there and it is Zinc Oxide. So this one's just an invisible zinc where you, you can put this on underneath your foundations or you can use this as a sunscreen if you're out walking and you're not going swimming or whatever because it's not water resistant. So it is a tinted day wear SPF 30 mineral shield. It's just called invisible 
zinc it doesn't have a lot of color in it mind you it's not like a bb cream or a C cc cream and they have a lot more color in them and they also have spf but this is an spf 30 so that's a really popular brand in australia i use that when i'm out walking because i'm not going swimming generally if i'm just walking around the neighborhood and i also use this underneath my foundations this is natia you'll probably often hear me mention natia the australian company that does skincare and um, skin products and cosmetics i love this company it's always cruelty free and this one is just a, it has an SPF 30 in it it's a moisturizer so it's simply a moisturizer and I put that underneath my foundation or my BB creams or my CC creams since foundations generally only have about 15 maybe 20 same with BB creams and CC creams okay so we can't forget our lips our lips are very important because yes you can get skin cancers on your lips why not it's skin isn't it so bliss text and this has an spf of 50 in it i need that when i'm going to the beach that's a strong one it's got spf 50 it's just a lip clear gloss and i really put a lot of that on my lips with lipstick too but you can also just for everyday wear out and about this is Nivea it's just a sheer uh, lip gloss it has no color in it that one that's only got an SPF 15 in it better than nothing and this one here is just a, a chapstick chapsticks are very popular brand in Australia they do um, SPF ones this has got a, a tint to it it's tinted it's it's a hydrating one now just be careful when you're buying this because nowhere on this chapstick it's hydrating does it ha say that it has an SPF in it it doesn't say that anywhere I'm going to be using the bliss text I've actually got two of these I put one in my handbag and I'll keep one in my beach bag as well because that's got an SPF of 50 in it and that's what we need for the lips okay so there are all the things that we can do to put on our skin and on our lips to protect ourselves from the sun from sun damage and from skin cancers but there are other things that we can do and I really don't hear this mentioned a great deal but in Australia we grow up learning that this is really important that there's three steps there's two other things we were told to do as well and I think that they're equally as important hats we have been encouraged to wear hats and I do I always always take a hat to the beach I wouldn't dream of going to the beach without a hat and a broad rimmed hat not just a little fedora that doesn't even cover the end of your nose I wear a broad rimmed hat to the beach and I own a couple because you get sick of wearing the same one and I actually keep two hats or even three sometimes in my car for when I'm out and about walking because um, just walking around shopping if you're not in a mall we don't have this town doesn't have a big mall we're okay with that but we've got lovely strip shopping and you know you often walking um, from A to B and you throw on a hat because it doesn't take long to get sunburnt not in this country the sun is really strong we have a, so these are the kind of hats you would wear to the beach you would wear them gardening out walking we are all encouraged to wear hats I think it's a very smart thing to do actually along with your sunscreen as well okay and what else do we do wear this particular type of swimwear this zips up it's a zip up lycra top so it goes all the way up here to the neck it has a little stand up collar and has short sleeves so that means this whole area here i don't have to worry about putting all the block out on up here and when i go swimming this is fine i can sit in the sun for 10 15 20 minutes without being too stressed about getting sunburnt because that's about the length of time i would spend in the sun so these are fantastic for that and um, 
I bought the bottom separately from Target. I got this from Target. Target does some really great swimwear. It's very economical and you get the mix and match, the different colors, different sizes. So you can create your own, <laughs> your own look, which I think is actually a better look, a better way to go. But these tops are great. You can get them full length, by the way. Years ago, we used to call these rash vests. Perhaps they still are, you know, because the surfers wear them surfing and the surfer girls all often wear these you'll often see them in them particularly the ones that are long sleeves when they're out spending a lot of time on the water itself they're much more prone to getting sunburn and sun damage and of course skin cancers so we're trying to prevent all these things but particularly um, skin cancer I also wear beach cover-ups I have a few I don't have a huge collection but I've got a few different beach cover-ups just to mix it up sometimes I try and get three quarter or full length. I always buy rayon or cotton, something that breathes a little bit, that's not too synthetic or not too hot. Um, this one is my favorite. It's from Target once again, cotton ball. It's just a big long shirt. It has a collar on it, so that protects up around my neck. I can button this one up. It has long sleeves and it even sits just below the knee. I usually wear this one mostly because it covers everything up and I can go for a nice walk for 20 or 30 minutes without stressing. I don't have to put so much block out on that way as well. And I always, always, always wear a wide brimmed hat. I, and I also wear, just for walking around, just a white shirt that also has a collar and I can button that up and it has long sleeves. It's a very fine cotton voil, so I'm not gonna get hot in it. That's for little sundresses, anything with a strap where I'm not covered up. When I'm going out for a walk, which I try and do quite often around my neighborhood, I have my little walking um, regimen where I'm trying to get some exercise. So I wear one of these. And even sometimes when I'm out in the town, if it's a particularly hot day and I've got a little bit of walking around to do, I throw this on over the dress. It probably doesn't look so glamorous, but often just tie a knot to make it look a little bit more stylish. But it's all about being sun aware and being sun smart. It's not about looking glamorous all the time or looking stylish all the time. We have to be sensible when it comes to the sun. Okay, ladies, thank you. Thank you so much for joining me today and I hope I was of some help and I just wanted to share with you what I do when I go to the beach and what I do to keep myself well protected from the sun. I've had a bit of experience at this and um, I, I take it pretty seriously. So thank you ladies for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye bye now.